Okay, so what we're going to do is do a head, and we're testing out the eye region to make sure we have enough geometry for the eye to close. So what I'm going to do is build some eye joints to close his eye. So we're going to select the eyes, and go to display, transform to stay, selection handle. And what that's doing is giving us something I can point to. These are just nerve surfaces, so they don't have any vertices to connect to. So with that there, I'm going to hide the head for a second and create a joint. And I'm just going to use V to snap to that and drop it straight forward. And what that should have done is given me a joint right where I need it, which is good. And I'm going to name it uh, I Up LF. And I'm going to duplicate it. And that second one, I'm going to name it I down LF. Okay, I'll bring back my head. And since the eyes are already open, I'm just going to rotate these in such a way that matches the rotation of the eye. It doesn't matter how big these joints are. If you're worried about it, you can always bring them in just a little bit to match so you can see them right on the surface. But it really doesn't matter. I'm going to take this lower one and put it right to there. Okay, so I have an upper eye joint and a lower eye joint. And I want to mirror those to the other side. So I'm going to select the top one and go to Skeleton, Mirror Joints. And this, make sure I'm in YZ. And I'm going to ch change the LF to the RT. So that'll pop into the joint over there for me. And I have it on Behavioral. So, they might go opposite directions in Y and in Z, but they're going to go the same in Z, which is what I want anyway. So I'll grab that lower joint and do the same thing. Great. Now these eyes here don't need their selection handles anymore. Alright. And I'm just going to bind this head. So let me duplicate the head. Hide it and call this one head eye bind BND. Okay. So we'll select all those joints. Select the head. Skin. Bind skin. I'm going to use a rigid bind because I'm only doing this for the eyes and the smooth bind does something a little bit different. So let me show you what a rigid bind does. And I'm going to do what's called force all because these two joints are in the exact same place there. And I'm going to go ahead and say bind joints. So now if I rotate this, it's going to take most of the head, but it is rotating my eyelid like I want to. Check the lower one. Same sort of thing. Okay. But what I want to do is just weight these guys so that they only do what I want them to. But the one thing you'll notice is that when I close this eye, even with that whole head going with it, that it rotates right around the eyeball like that. That's exactly what I want. Okay, so let's do a little bit of weighting. I'll select the head and go to Edit Deformers, Paint Cluster Weights Tool, and you get the what looks like a familiar weighting tool. If you're familiar with Smoothbind, it's the same exact thing. For painting, it just does something different. In Smoothbind, when you take away from a joint, it has to put it on another joint. In Rigidbind, it's not going to do that. It's just going to be related to that one joint. If you select one of these joints and go to Edit Deformers, Edit Membership Tool, these are the vertices that this joint will control, whereas these are the vertices that this joint will control, and this one, and this one. So you can actually change the membership, and you can change the weighting. So in this case, we know that with the lower half of the head, we don't want to control it. So I'm just going to use control to drop those points out on the nose, too. Do the same thing over here. Drop out some of the nose. Drop out the low fast face. And I could weight this off, or I can just do the membership to get rid of it. Let's look at here. All these parts I don't want. And the same thing for the other side. Probably not going to move up there at all. There we go. Okay. So now, just to see the difference, the weighting is still 100%, but you get sort of the idea of what that's doing. So I'm going to go ahead and weight this. So I'll go back to Edit Deformers, 
paint cluster weights tool and once I have that selected if I right click over my joint I can say paint weights you want to be careful because if you miss it it's edge and it'll get you out of that tool and I'm just going to paint this so if I hold down U I can change my options I'm going to change it to scale and then by using N oops N I'm going to scale down just a little bit from 1 and usually I use like 0.9 or something like that to scale and B will change the size of my brush so if I want to scale down more, I'll bring it down more. Brings it down a lot more as I go. So this whole upper part. And think of the scale as like a multiplier. It's basically saying the weight times whatever that multiplier is. So 0.9 or 0.8. Now I'm going to use the smooth, and the smooth is basically going to smooth it off just a little bit for me. And I'll rotate this joint. Let's see what it looks like. It's already looking a lot better. And actually, what I generally do is key it. So I'll key it in the open position, the scrub forward in time. I'll rotate it down to a very low position. It's very sleepy. You see I have some weighting issues going on. I'll just clean those up. But you notice that it doesn't penetrate through my eye, which is what I want. So I'm going to use Y. I have to go back in and reselect that joint. Let's take a look at what's going on here. Oh, okay. So the inside of the eye has just got a little too much weight on it there. So let's see if I can smooth some of that off just a little bit. Or scale it back. And now we have a smooth tool. And then inside just a little bit. Let's see what that gives us. There we go, that's better. If I want to add a little bit back in, I'll go to add, and I'm going to use a very low value. So I'll bring it down to zero, and then bring it back just a little bit. And I'm just going to paint a little right in the center there. But I do want to make sure that I'm not going over. The difference also with Rigidvine is you can go over 0.1, or to 1. You can go as high as you want. So right now I'm not clamped. So if I clamp these upper and lower. Sorry, I'm in a car right now, so I'm bouncing around. There we go. And I'll smooth that back off just a little bit. Yeah, it looks better. And let's scale this corner of his eyes a little bit. Again, okay, I'll bring the weight back up. There we go. And then you smooth to smooth it out. There we go. Now, the only reason I don't go over the weight is because I want to be able to output this weight map and bring it back in. And if I do it as an image format, it won't go over one. It doesn't know what that is. But I can. I want it to. So, example, turn the clamp off. Put the value low, it goes add. And I can just keep going and going and going with this guy. But I tend not to do that because if I ever want to export the weights and maybe duplicate it on the other side, I would lose anything that's over one. What I tend to do is just rotate the eye more if I want to close his eye more. 